Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be going over an easy way to break down almost any video inside of Resolve practically automatically. And this is useful if you're a video editor, maybe a director or cinematographer who wanna get better at pacing their sequences or just get a bird's eye view uh, for a case study uh, or learning experience. So we'll open Resolve and find the video that we wanna analyze, right click on it, and then select scene cut detection. It opens a scene detect window and all we have to do is click on auto scene detect and it will go through the video and automatically try to find the edits for us. The one thing you want to keep in mind is that these lines are the edit points that it's going to be adding for us. The taller they are, the more certain Resolve is of the edit. The smaller they are, the more confused Resolve is. And this can happen for a number of reasons, but one of them might be that there might be a fade in or a fade out and Resolve has a bad time with that. This bar that I'm moving around is basically the sensitivity and the higher it is, the more picky Resolve is with the edits and the lower it is, it's basically just taking in everything. So you kind of want to find a happy point for your video. Every single video is going to be different. So usually I like to be kind of right around the middle. The important thing is that it gets most of them done. So if you do end up having to do it manually, the way it works is the first viewer is the frame immediately before the cut. And this frame in the middle is the cut. This right frame over here is just for reference. That's the one immediately after. So these are the first two frames basically of the next clip. And this one should be the previous clip. So this right here, you do not want. You don't want them to be the same. What you want is for this frame on the left to be different and these two on the right to be almost identical. And what that's gonna do for you is create an edit point right here down the middle. On your keyboard, if you press P and N, which stands for previous and next, you can jump through these markers and get a feel for how accurate it is. So for example, this one right here is a good cut because this one's different. These two are basically the same and you can go through same thing, different on the left, basically the same on the right. Anyway, after we get the points that we want, uh, all we have to do is click add cuts into media pool. If this menu pops up, you can just go ahead and click uh, change. And now we have all those edits added automatically into our media pool. If I set it to thumbnail mode, we can see visually a very good idea of what the cuts are, what the sequences are. Over on the edit page, we have all our clips in the media pool and we can just select everything with control A, right click and create a new timeline. And now we have our edits laid out. So just looking at the timeline, you can get a feel for how long or short they held certain shots and how things are building up. So I left this in here just to make a point that it can make mistakes. And here there's a bunch of edits that it missed in this one section. And this is where you might wanna go back and add those markers manually or just adjust the threshold so it takes in more cuts. But still, most of these are good and you can get a very good idea of what the pacing and the sequence was like. So if you go over to the color page and open the light box, this is where it becomes interesting for directors and cinematographers because you get an almost storyboard level thumbnail view that you can take a look at and analyze sequences with. By selecting clips that are part of the same sequence, we can go ahead and group them together uh, by right clicking and click on add into a new group. So we could say maybe this is intro. And now when we go back into the color page, we can select clips at the top and show only grouped. And now we can see those clips from that sequence back to back, almost as if they were shot in order. And this is helpful if you're a director or cinematographer because it gives you an idea of how it may have been shot the day of, or it might give you an idea of how you might wanna put it together for your video. So this is just another one of those hidden gems that not a lot of people know about. So this is definitely not what that feature was intended to be used for, but it's another one of those things that you can turn into an asset, even if you're not a colorist. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, uh, leave a comment in the description, let me know what you thought about it, and I will see you guys on the next video.